important thing about your book, the Boudoir Bible, to me, is it talks about different kinds and ways of erotic and sexuality and everything you need to know about this. And yet, it's not a common sex guide. Am I right? I wrote the Boudoir Bible because I felt as if it was something that was missing. I felt that the scenario that we live in today is very sex-driven, but we are misinformed, or there's certain things that we don't talk about. And I clearly did it because it was missing, otherwise I wouldn't have wasted five years of my life. <laughs> Pleasure taboo, in my opinion, is is actually the taboo today, the die-hard taboo, where sex is no longer a taboo. Pleasure and love. I find that it's, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to talk about love. We forget the value of love. And, and it sounds like, you know, sometimes I might be categorized as a hippy-dippy, one of those hippy-dippy girls, but I do believe in the power of love. In fact, the book is actually a book that's, in a certain sense, it's dedicated to all. Uh, all of us, um, male, female, transgender, gay, not gay, whatever, it doesn't matter. I think that the acquisition of, of, of sexual knowledge allows us to own our bodies, and that's, that's really important. The actual understanding of the body, for me, is super important, and there's things about our bodies that people see, still say to me, oh my god, for real? Women ejaculate? Or my prostate, if I'm a man, is in my anus? I have to go through my anus to actually directly touch it? Yes, you do. Let's talk about bondage. You, you, bondage is a, quite a huge chapter in your book. And when I read it, I realized I had to smile and then I blushed because I realized I don't know anything about bondage. And the things I, I thought I know are wrong. So there are a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of wrong myths going on. Um, you might give us a little teaser. Well, I think, it's, I think that we can speak of bondage and um, any form of restraint, sensorial restraint. And another technique which is um, really haunted by misinterpretation and, um, and that's flagellation. They kind of go hand in hand in terms of being, being pigeonholed or categorized as SM and therefore uh, practices that are um, used to provoke pain. If you look at every face of every woman in this room, they are in a sort of trance. Because what bondage does is as well as flagellation, uh, as well as simple visual restraint, is that it forces, the, it, it actually makes the body tick in a different way. And the brain, of course, reacts. We rely on our sight all the time, so if I restrain your sense of sight, my brain is going to start to go into action to compensate in a certain sense. And so the other senses start to work more quickly. You wonder why these women look so calm and cool and collected is because, first of all, they're not perceiving pain. Uh, they are quite high on endorphins, they're quite glazed over, and they're quite happy to be where they are. <laughs> they, 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 I think one of, one of the misinterpretations is that we think, oh my god, they're there, they're still, how can they stay like that, roped up like that? In reality, all of these techniques or all of these processes that we see in a still image are part of a process. And so a, a master of the chords is actually dancing with the chords, dancing with his partner, who may or may not be a sexual partner, because the chords in themselves are enough to take a person into another space, no? In fact, in the Boudoir Bible, I deal with uh, transcendental techniques, and one of those transcendental techniques is the chords. I start to ask myself these questions, why do I like it? Why does he like it? Why does she like it? Why do we do this? Why do humans do this? And so I got myself in contact with some neurologists and I began to study the human body to its core and I discovered that 
there are nerve endings in what we call the sweet spot, which is that little area just between the buttocks and where they attach to the legs. No? And the sweet spot has these nerve endings that actually terminate in the glands, whether it be the clitoris or the head of the penis. That's why people like to be spanked. And that's probably why my cat likes to get spanked, even though the position is slightly different. He likes it just on the top of his little tail. He comes back for more. Sometimes he'll hop away. He's purring in ecstasy. He's purring like in three tones at the same time. And he comes and jumps back onto the stool and sticks his bum up in the air and says, more, mommy. kill the mystery and the spontaneity of sex. That's impossible. When two people collide in desire, you can't cancel that. You can't make it up. You can't create it. And no, love is not always on the menu, sadly. So when it's not on the menu, when somebody says to me, I'm single, I haven't had sex for eight years, I'm like, darling, you have to do something about that. You're single, which in my opinion means you should be multiple. Go out there and find your partner. sex lives because I believe that the way that we that we evolve our sexuality and our perception of sex um, and our pleasure, our sexual well-being, it reverberates in every aspect of our lives. And the only comparison I can make uh, in my own experience is that of yoga or meditation. I know that the time that I work uh, sitting or the time that I uh, do my yoga, that it does reverberate and it does affect the way that I move through the world. And so I personally seem to, um, I see around me a lot of very stiff-hipped people, and I'm happy to say that you guys are not part of that crowd. Um, but there's lots of stiff-hipped folks out there that, that have ignored their sexuality. And um, it's, uh, it's hurtful in the end. I think it's uh, the base of most frustration, and it can lead to illness. And we know that human nature is to bond and communicate. And, and when we make love to each other, we speak a language that we can't speak with words necessarily. Bethany, thank you very much. And you add your um, savoir faire to our savoir vivre, and that's, that's good. Well, the art of loving is the art of living somehow, no? <laughs> thank you. Does somebody want to ask questions? I like to end up with a and a if, 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 if there's any questions. At least give you the option, otherwise we'll go have a drink together. <laughs>